I'm Dean Hemphill, the pastor of Clark's Chapel Baptist Church in Thomaston, Georgia. It is a great pleasure this time to bring you a service from our church. We are very thankful that several years ago that God led us to do this. We want to help you each week, wherever you may, may be, to have a service from this church. A great gospel singing, choir singing, special music, and to preach God's word. If possible this time, when I preach in the service, if you could, get your Bible out and follow along with us. You'll learn much by doing that from God's Word. But once again, we thank you so much for this next hour to spend with us from this church. We hope you'll be blessed. We give God all the praise for it. And you pray for us, and we'll pray for you. And with God's help, we'll all make it together one day at a time. Thank you so much. look for me because I'm going to be gone. Amen? I've, told, I've joked with my wife uh, 
a lot about, and I'm being serious. I said, don't have no big funeral for me. I don't, I don't need one. I'm not going to be here. I ain't going to be here. I don't understand people putting themselves in debt. I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> sorry about that. Brother Dean kind of made fun of me a little bit last week. Said it's been uh, three months he, since he asked me to preach. He said it took me three months to get it, get it together. And I've condensed that three months down for this morning, so it's only going to be an hour and 15 minutes. I, pr I promise you. I'm going to try not to hold you long. But I do take a while sometimes to get things together because I don't take this lightly. Uh, I don't, when we open up this Word of God, it's something that is living and is holy. And I want to treat it that way. So I, I do take my time sometimes because I don't want myself to get in the way. I want it only to be God. It's only been a few weeks ago that I was able to kneel down at this altar. such a great experience in my life. But I went to my office last week, and I'm going to say this now because I hadn't had the opportunity, but I made a decree to myself and to God. And it may sound a little bit weird to you, but it ain't to me. As I spoke out loud to God, and I said, I decree to you, God, that I'm going to study your word vividly. I'm going to study it earnestly. I'm going to soak in everything you have to give me. And I also stood in my office, and I said, I'm going to stand here today, God, and make a commitment to you that I'm going to totally, with me and you, I'm going to totally take over Thomaston. Y'all may think that sounds a little crazy, but everything is possible with God. I'm no longer going to let people dictate what I do. Only me and God. And with his help, I'm going to take over this town for the cause of Christ. And I believe that each and every one of us that's standing in here today, we need to make that same commitment that Clark's Chapel, from now on, we're going to stand together and we're going to take over this community for the cause of Christ. We're going to take over this town for the cause of Christ. We're going to take over this county for the cause of Christ today. And as I begin to shout this out to God, he put something on my heart, and he said, you can do it. You and this church can do it, but you got to have one thing. you got to have unity. You've got to be united together. Amen. United together. If I had a title to my message this morning, it would be United Equals Victory. Amen. United Equals Victory. Heavenly Father, God, we come to you today. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, for your presence in this house. God, we thank you for the filling of the Holy Spirit that you've gave us, God, in this place. God, I ask you right now to remove me. God, I don't want to say anything today that's out of my own feelings or my own thinking or my own mind, God, but I want you to speak through me today the words that you would have me to say. God, the word that you would have delivered to your people, God. Lord, I've already been praying, and I know you have, but I ask you, God, to prepare the hearts of your people. Prepare them to receive your word, God. And we love you, and we'll give you all the praise and honor and glory that you deserve. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, I ask you to turn to Philippians chapter 2. 
Philippians chapter 2, and we're going to be reading verses 1 through 4. When you have it in your place, would you please stand for the reading of God's Word today? It says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of spirit, if any bowels and mercies, Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but, on, but every man also on the things of others." You may be seated this morning. Such an important verse here for us to grasp a hold to. I, I remember I, I told Brother Dean a story. I was kind of telling him what was going through my, my mind and my heart. And I was telling him a story. When I played ninth grade, when I was in football in the ninth grade, I concentrated on defensive end. That's where I played. And that's where I played the most of was defensive end. And uh, one day I was sitting or standing there. The offense was playing. They was about on the 15-yard line. They were fixing the score. I was getting excited. And the very next play, our fullback got hurt. Guy come off the end, hit him right in the knee, hurt him pretty bad. So I'm standing there, not really paying any attention much, to what's going on, I'm standing at the end because I only play defense at this time in the ninth grade. And I hear from down the line, I hear Morpheus. I was like, he ain't calling me. <laughs> he said, Morpheus, come here. I run down there, yeah, coach, what is it? He said, you pretty smart, get in there at fullback. I said, I said, Coach, I ain't never played fullback. Get in there. Get in there. I need somebody in. I had no idea what I was doing. I, I come to the huddle and my running back, his name was James Charleston. He looked at me and said, what are you doing here? I said, I'm finna play fullback. I said, I don't know what to do. You just tell me what to do. He said, all right, on this play, you run around the end and you block the corner. That's all you have to do. Block the corner. I got that. I can do that. We got in line. I didn't even know how to stand. I, I'm just, he, he puts me where I need to be. Everything is good. The ball is high. I take off running around the corner. Here I come. My running back's almost about to beat me because he's faster than me anyway. Here I come around the corner, and I see the guy. I see him. It ain't nobody around but me and him, and I miss the block. I miss the block. And my running back got tackled for a five-yard loss. For a five-yard loss. See, it took one person that wasn't in sync with the rest of the team. See, everybody else had done their, own, their blocking assignments. Everybody had done them perfectly. But one person, me. I wasn't in sync with the team. I wasn't in sync with the play. You see, all week long, our coaches had come up with this strategy to beat this team. All week long. But I didn't pay attention to everything. I only paid attention to what I had to do, what benefited me. And because of that, when I was stuck in the game at fullback, I missed my block, and the whole team had to suffer the five-yard loss for the tackle. Because one person was out of sync. One person wasn't united with the team. We all had to suffer. Listen, it ain't no different today in this church. God has laid out a plan in his word. He has told us step by step on what to do. It's a strategic plan. And if one of us in this room is out of sync, if one of us is not united with the body, we all are going to suffer. We're all going to suffer. Listen, Satan has come against us. 
He's going to come against us with everything he has. He's scratching. He's fighting. He's clawing against us, and he's looking for any little thing to push us back. He's looking at any little thing to make us lose. Inch by inch, yard by yard. Look at what's going on in the world today. And it's not the world's fault. God has never one time in this word blamed the world for being the world. It's the church's fault. That's where the blame lies, for not standing and being the church. It's got to come to a stop. Listen, we are in so much competition with each other that we can't do nothing together. We're in so much competition and so much relying on all the differences that we have. We can't focus on the task at hand. The task at hand. Listen, I'm tired of being pushed around. I'm not going to be pushed around anymore. I'm not going to do it. Hey, I've read the back of the book. I already know we win. What am I got to be scared of now? I'm not going to be pushed around. And we as a church need to come together and say enough is enough. We will be united. We will stand in victory. Unity equals victory today. Now that I've got that off my chest, let's go into the Word. Number one, I believe that God has a commandment for unity. He has a commandment for unity. I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded. By being what? Like-minded. Like-minded means this, just to have the same opinion, to have the same goal. Listen, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10 says this. Now, I beseech you. Beseech you means to ask urgently. God says that this is important. This is urgent. I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment being like-minded. There are many verses in the Bible that warn us to have no division among ourselves. No division among ourselves. You know how division gets started in the church? With the lips. Division is started in the church with the lips. We have a problem with somebody over here or somebody's made me mad over here. Well, instead of going to that person, what we want to do is talk behind their back. We want to talk behind their back. It's division. We can't have that. We can't let things harbor inside us and fester up. That's when things start happening. That's when we start fighting among ourselves instead of fighting the war that God has laid out before us. Instead of going to the plan that God has laid out. Listen, verse 1 says, if there is any consolation, consolation means discussion. It means discussion. So if there is any discussion, we must do it in one accord, like-minded. We can't accomplish anything together. We can't accomplish anything if we're pulling at different ends. It's like a tug of war between each other. The only way we can accomplish what, the, what is laid out before of us is to have the same goal and the same agenda. Listen, we're not always going to agree. Ask my wife. She don't never agree with me. Ever. We're not always going to agree on everything, but we don't have to fight about it. We don't have to fight and fuss about it. Listen, all of us in this room need to have the same goal. And that goal is building the kingdom of God. That goal is leaving this house and going out into this world and seeing souls saved. That is the goal. That is the goal that we should have. See, so God's command is clear when he says that there's no division. And yes, I believe that it's a command. I think that any time that God says something in this word to us, it's a commandment. 
So God is commanding us. He's commanding us that his purpose is for all of us to be like-minded with no division. No decisions can be made without this. Look in verse 1. We can't make any consolation, which means discussion, if we don't have it what? In Christ. If any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection, any mercy, that's what we have to have. Everything we do has to be in Christ. Everything we do has to be in love. Everything we do has to be in affection and mercy towards each other. Amen. And if we're going to have any discussion, if we're going to move forward any if we don't do it in this manner, it will cause division. It will cause division. We have to become united. We can't be divided to move forward. Number two, what does unity bring? What does unity bring? Let's look at verse two. He says, fulfill ye my... Y'all didn't say that good enough. Fulfill ye my joy. It brings joy. Unity brings fulfillment. Fulfillment and joy. Joy means a feeling of great pleasure and happiness. A feeling of great pleasure and happiness. Listen, that's why we have churches full of people today that look like they just ate a black bean burger. They ain't got no joy. They ain't got no fulfillment. They ain't got no happiness. Why? Because they ain't united with the body. They're not united with the church. You wonder why your family is falling apart this morning? It's because you're separated. You wonder why things ain't going right in your life? It's because you are separated from the body. You're separated. You wonder why your wife don't like you, your husband don't like you, and your kids don't respect you. It's because you ain't got no joy. You're miserable because you're separated from the body of Christ. Listen, come on back. Come on back and get your joy. Come on back and get your fulfillment. Listen, my father is the head of this body. And whatever he has, you have. Y'all didn't, I said whatever he has, you have this morning. If he's got joy, you've got joy. If he's got peace, you've got peace. If he's got fulfillment, you have fulfillment. If he's got provision, you've got provision today. If he's got forgiveness, you've got forgiveness. Whatever he has, you have. Come on back. Come on back to the Father. Come on back to the house. Come on back to the family of God. Fulfill your joy this morning in Jesus Christ. Whatever he has, you have. You don't have joy. You don't have gladness. I see some of you right here sometimes. You don't want to sing. Oh, God, we got to stand again. You're looking around while the word's being preached. You're not paying attention. My God, will he hurry up and get through? Peachtree line is going to be so long. It's going to be so long. You ain't got no joy. No happiness. No unity. Come on back to the family. Get reunited. Get connected with him. Get connected with the family, with the body of God. The body of Christ. Because if we'll all come together, because it only takes one to make the loss. It only takes one for Satan to get in on and to push us back. Come on and get connected. Feel your joy. Get back with the body of Christ because we need unity. Because what does unity equal? Victory. Victory. Unity equals victory. So number three, what does division bring? If we're divided today, what does division bring? 
Look in verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. What does division bring? It brings strife. What is strife? Strife is self-ambition. You ain't caring about nothing but your own little world. You just worried about yourself. It brings what? It brings vain glory. Vain glory translates to conceit. What does conceit mean? It's excessive pride in yourself. Listen, this is what happens when you steadily separate yourself from the body of Christ. You form this bubble around you of self-importance. You think that you mean more than everybody else. You sit on these pews on Sunday mornings and you have your little bubble, and it's all about you. It's all about how the preacher can make you feel. It's all about what you can gain out of any situation. Anything good or anything bad that goes on in the church, it's always about you. It's a vain glory. It's a self-ambition full of pride. And it's all about you. How do you get this way? Let, let, me, let me borrow you, Brandon. Come here. Don't worry. I ain't going to kiss you. Come here. This is how, this is how self-ambition, this is how this becomes. See, first we're locked in arms. We're locked in. We're family. But I start getting a little bit, can you? Can you believe he's sitting in my pew? That music is too loud. Preacher Dean preaches too hard. He preached right at me Sunday. He knew my situation. It's all about me. Hey, I've heard this one right here. Yeah, I'm fixing to get you. Um, we've been going here 40 years years. For, that is not how we did it when Jimmy Carter was president. <laughs> you, mean, you mean we're going to change something? Look what's happening. It's making it all about me. All about me and my happiness. I forget what's going on. I forget what the whole point is. I've left the family. I've left the family. And the only way that you can sit down, son, I'm sorry. The only way to get that back is to do what? This is how God wants us to be right here. Look at verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but what? Lowliness. What am I going to do? Esteem others better than myself. What am I going to do? I'm going to put others' feelings in front of mine. And I get closer and closer and closer to the body. Esteem others better than themselves. Making each other better. It's okay, sir, you can sit in my pew. I'll just come over here. I'll just come over here. Yeah, I'll change Sunday school rooms. It's all right. Hey. I'll change sides of the church. That's okay. I'm just here. I'm just happy. I'm full of joy. I just want to I just want to hear the word. I'm not worried about all this little childish stuff. And that's how I become closer and closer and closer to the family. I put the family's needs before my needs. That's what Paul was saying when he wrote this. He was writing to this church. He was trying to give them an understanding that this is more just about a personal faith. This is more than just about your own personal gain. This affects us all. We need you. 
One person can't win the game. We need you today. And the more you stay separated, the more you think, make this thing about you and your self-ambition and your glory and your gratification, the farther and farther away you are going to be separated from the body. Everything is just going to become about you. So what do we have to do? We have to let go of self-ambition. We have to esteem others better than ourselves. And until this starts to happen, until you decide in your mind that this is going to be what you need to do, you're going to infect the whole body of Christ. It's like a cancer. Listen, I've done some studying on cancer, and cancer is when one cell attacks another cell. So what happens is you have this one cell who attacks another cell, and they basically swallow it up. And then them, they go to another cell, and they swallow it up. And before you know it, it's a big cluster called a tumor. Let me tell you something. The only way to get rid of that is to remove the tumor. So you better be careful. You better be careful on what you're doing before God just may remove you from the body. Don't be a cancer to the body. Don't be a cancer to the body of Christ. It ain't about you. Hey, I, I, I don't mean to bust your bubble this morning, but it ain't all about you. It ain't about me. It ain't about Brother Dean. It ain't about the name on the sign at the front of this door, Clark's Chapel. It is all about him. It's all about him. It's all about giving him glory. He's the only one that can have self-ambition. He's the only one that can have vain glory. That's God himself. It's all about him today. And if you're not in touch with him, if you're not in tune with the body, if you're not in unity with the body, you are cancer. And you need to get yourself straight today. Today. You are continuing to do harm to the body of God. So we learned things this morning. God commands us to be united. We, we know that. He warns us to be united. What does unity bring? Joy. Joy. Fulfillment. Peace. Understanding. Community. Unity. That's what joy, unity brings. It's just a happiness. Exceeding happiness. It's exceeding. Don't look at me like that. I got joy. That ain't joy. It's exceeding happiness. What does division bring? Strife, vainglory, self-ambition, a self-importance. So we know that we want joy, and we don't want division. So how do we become united? How do we do that? It's right here. Let nothing, verse 3, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. That's how we achieve unity. We let go of strife. We let go of self-ambition. We let go of vainglory. We let go of conceit, pride in ourselves. We esteem others or we respect them. We esteem them by lifting them up above our own selves, better than ourselves. We put other people's feelings before our own. Listen, if we will do all that, we can come together. We can have the same mindset. Think about what we can do through Jesus. We can stand together strong, united, and push back Satan. Push him back. Everything the devil tries to do, everything he tries to achieve, we're right there. Nope. Nope. We locked arms. We strong. 
Because we're united today. We will be able to go out together and see souls saved for the cause of Christ. Being in unity. Listen, if you just watch the news, how many in here watch the news? My wife makes me sometimes. Listen, Satan is, the world is winning everywhere. Oh, Brother Justin, I just don't, but look around. Why are they winning these battles? Why are they winning these battles? It's because they're strong. Listen, they all different kinds of people in the world, but they have one agenda, and it's everything against Christianity. Everything that God stands for. If it has the word Christ-like on it, they stand together. And they're pushing back, and they're winning. And because they're together, they're just playing out stronger than us right now. They're stronger than us. Listen, we're so scattered today. We're in so much competition with each other that we can't get together to do nothing. We can't do We just saw that two months ago. When the alcohol vote, it saddens me that we have 50 churches in one association. Baptist churches 40 miles from each other. Most of them dying, but too proud, too much pride to get up and go join a family. It's a shame today. We're scattered in competition with each other. Well, my church grew 10 people last week. No, it didn't. 10 people left one church and came to yours. That's not growing the kingdom. That's not growing. That's just scattering people around. Too many whiny people in the church world today worried about their own self. Too busy in competition to get together in one mind and one. And don't act like we won't do it either. Don't act like Clark Chapel's an angel sitting on the post. Let another church down the road have an event. Let's see how many of y'all show up to support them. Hey, it's just the truth. Let Clark Chapel have an event. Brother Dean smiles at me sometimes. I always see every church, I send every one of them a poster. He smiles at me sometimes. I send them all, and don't none of them come? I tell you what we do, though. We'll look at it and say, that's a good idea. I think I'll have that at my church, too. That's what we do. We can't even get together as God's people. Imagine what we could do. If it, listen, imagine what we could do if every church in this county could come together and have one community and one Christian family. Imagine what we could do as God's people if we all could get together and stand strong. Imagine that today. Stop being in competition with each other. Most of the churches happen off of splits because there's a bunch of whiny Christians in the world. They're fighting over every little thing. We're fighting over the carpet. We're fighting over the paint. We're leaving because a vote didn't go my way. It's ridiculous. It's childish mess. Brother Dean preached last week about getting off the milk. All of us in here sucking on bottles every single day. It's about ourself. It's about self-ambition. We must unite. We must unite to have victory. There can be, and I'm not talking just about our church. I don't want y'all to think that this is what this message is about, Clark's Chapel. It's about the whole Christian community. It's about everybody that says that they're a child of God. It's about Clark's Chapel. It's about the church down the road. It's about all of God's people getting together, becoming one family. 
One family supporting each other, standing with each other, fighting with each other. That's what it's about. That's what God's talking about here. Unity. The only way, the only way that we can have victory is if we all become united as one. United as one. I want to challenge you this morning. I can't, I can't stand here today and vouch for the churches in our community. But we can stand here together as one mind at Clark's Chapel. We, this body right here, this front right here, we can decide this morning that we're going to unite together. That we're going to stand together. We're going to put away the self-ambition. We're going to pop our own bubbles. We're going to put this church family ahead of anything else. We're going to put the people that's sitting next to you, their feelings above your own. And we're going to have one mind, one accord, one goal, one agenda. And that is to bust out of these walls and see souls saved in Thomaston, Georgia for the cause of of Christ I challenge you today listen let's have real revival I ain't talking about a meeting where we stick a sign out there on the road and brother Rick comes and he preaches and we have great services and everybody's happy but let's have real revival you know if we have real revival something to happen out of that a crusade it can happen right here with our church. It can happen right here today with you. I challenge you this morning. Maybe some of you in here is just doing exactly what I said. You've got self-ambition. No, that's not self Yes, that's self-ambition. That's worrying about your own self. Come this morning. Get it right. Maybe you're here this morning and somebody sitting right here in this church you just don't like. They've made you mad. Get over it. Don't just come to the altar either. Don't just come to this altar. You go to that person today, this morning. You go take them by the hand out of love and you ask for their forgiveness. And don't wait on theirs in return. You ask for their forgiveness. Y'all come to this altar and make it right today. You want revival? Is that what you want? Do you want to see souls saved for the cause of Christ? Do you want to be united today? Then God's Word says that's exactly what we have to do. That's, it's not me. I didn't say it. God's Word says it right here. I'll read it all to you one more time. Therefore, if there be any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels, any mercy, bowels means affection, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through self-ambition. Let nothing be done through vain glory, through strife. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. That's what God is telling us that we need to do to become united and have no divisions so that we can have victory. Who's with me this morning? Who's ready to stand this morning? Today, 
today, right now, let's get it right. Let's get it right. Look, I don't care if you've got a problem with me. Come tell me. I'll beg you for my forgiveness. Please forgive me. If I've done anything, I just want to see this church. I want to see this body. It's, it's too full of good people. Y'all, we can take over. That's what I want to do. I want to dominate this town in Jesus' name. We can take over it. And not for our glory. Not to say, ooh, look at what Clark Chapel. No. For the head. For him. Heavenly Father, God, we come to you today. We thank you for this time that you've given us in your word. God, we thank you for this church and this family and what they mean. God, I ask you today if there's anybody in here that's not in unity with the body of Christ. God, if they're not together, God, in this body, Lord, convict their hearts today. Let them know that they matter. God, let them know that this body needs them. We need them to get back in touch, get back connected with the family. God, I ask you this morning if there's anybody in here that has any fault or aught with anybody, God, that they'll go to them this morning and they'll ask for their forgiveness, God, and they'll come to this altar and they'll make it right. God, that this church at Clark Chapel might have true revival, that a crusade will break out and souls will be saved in your name. Lord, I ask you to be with us. Lord, convict hearts today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we all stand this morning, maybe you're here and you don't know Jesus as your Savior. You really don't even know what we've been talking about this morning. I just want to tell you today that the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Now is the point in time. If you're out here and you don't know Christ as your Savior, I beg you, do not leave this place. You don't have plenty of time. Don't leave this place without coming and letting me introduce you to the one that can save your soul. As we sing. You have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase and have earnestly verbally prayed. Hi, my name is Brother Justin Morphis, and I'd like to thank you so much for tuning in to Clark's Chapel TV this week. Today we heard a message about united equals victory. I think this is so important in the church community today. We have created such separation among ourselves that we have forgotten the main goal. I believe that any church that is founded on the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ should have one mind and one accord and one goal and one agenda, and that is going out into the world and seeing souls saved for the cause of Christ. Thank you once again for tuning in to Clark's Chapel TV. Check us out on Facebook. If you need prayer, please call us at the number at the bottom of the screen. Thank you so much. Until we see you again, goodbye.